The Boston Celtics' lethal mix of defense, superstar caliber shot creation, and depth makes them one of the greatest squads of this generation. Everyone raves about the Warriors' experience, but a top scoring option in my fellow Torontonian Andrew Wiggins is only in his second career playoff appearance, and the sixth man in Jordan Poole is making his postseason debut. Focal Golden State scoring options experiencing overwhelming playoff adversity for the first time. Conversely for Boston, Horford set the NBA record for playoff games before making the finals. Derek White scored 36 for the Spurs in Game 3 of the West Quarter Finals back in 2019, and the core revolving around the Jays had made at least three conference finals appearances entering 2022's finals. You're about to see a breakdown on the backbone defensively in the Time Lord RW3, how Steph and Clay aren't getting enough help, the playmaking of Jason Tatum, and a prediction of what will happen in Game 4. Before continuing, only 12.2% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepLowHoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Robert Williams III gives Boston a valuable lob threat offensively, but more prominently, an intimidation factor from out on the perimeter through to the paint, guarding opponents on the other side of the court. Rob went through surgery on his torn left meniscus back in March and has been in and out of the lineup ever since, but he's battled through it to compete in all three games during 2022's finals, and he's been Boston's most valuable defensive force. The Warriors scored 49.2 points per game in the paint against Dallas in the conference finals. That sank to a playoff worst by far within a series, 30.7 paint points in the finals. There's no denying that RW3 has both stopped and intimidated the Dubs from attacking the rim, considering he owns the best defensive rating in these finals and the best by a big man by far. As Jordan Poole penetrates the lane, four Celtic defenders have their eyes on him. And when Robert Williams stops the drive, as Gary Payton catches Jalen Brown ball watching, JP drops a scoop pass to the young glove for what seems like an easy dunk. Despite hobbling on a bad knee, the Time Lord swiftly rotates from Poole over to Payton, shocking Gary with his 9'4 inch standing reach and 40 inch vertical jump. Hedging as the Celtics did all night on Warrior screen and rolls, here, Williams allows Pritchard to recover with his quick feet on the perimeter, flies back to pick up a streaking Wiggins, putting him in perfect position to stuff an ill-advised floater from Bielitsa. Offensively, on multiple possessions around the basket, the athleticism and pure size from Rob proved to be unstoppable from the much smaller Draymond Green. Williams grabs an O board off his own miss right here and puts it back over Green, this poor reach from Draymond gets him out of position, and the speed and long strides from Rob do the rest. After receiving this lob from Brown, Rob smartly gathers to come down first, and then you get a taste of why the springiness of Williams is an issue for Green to bother. Back to Rob's bread and butter, as here, he gets the chase down block on Draymond. If there's one play though that any big man can learn from, it was this perfect hedge and recover in a pick and roll between Steph and Gary Payton where Rob intelligently baits Curry into thinking Peyton's open, give credit to Tatum for giving great weak side help, and the constantly active hands from Time Lord gets him the deflection and clean steal. Before Green even catches this potential dime from Curry, he's thinking about finishing over the best rim protector in basketball and fumbles the pass. But the play that'll make every highlight reel is this drive from Curry, who seems to give himself enough space for a wide open floater with Rob sitting deep in the paint. But Robert sitting that far back is really just to bait Curry into going up. Steph does just that, and the once in a lifetime ability to cover ground from the six foot nine athletic phenom in RW3 sends the runner flying out of bounds. As you can see, the combination of Boston's strategy to hedge and recover on those pick and rolls, mixed with the reach plus hops of Robert Williams III, makes things nightmarish for attackers. Speaking of intimidating defenders, while Curry's been outstanding throughout this series, when Steph's been defended by Smart so far in these finals, Marcus has forced him into four turnovers and held him to just 12 points in three games on 36% shooting from the floor. 
The Splash Brothers revolutionized the game of basketball in the 2010s decade and continue to be spectacular in the confines of an NBA Finals. But two of the greatest three-point marksmen we've ever seen aren't getting nearly enough help right now. Specifically, Steph's not getting the proper support, as the Warriors' offensive rating these finals of 116.8 with Steph on the floor would rank number one this season, while their 91.5 mark with Steph on the bench would rank worst in the last 50 seasons, according to StatMuse. Speaking of having top value, Boston's speedy point guard off the bench in 8 Mile Peyton Pritchard shockingly has the highest plus minus of any player in these finals. If you'd have to pick a real MVP, you could make the case for Jalen Brown, who I gave some praise to in yesterday's upload, go watch that after this. But despite struggling with his efficiency, after the 12 point outing in Game 1, Jason Tatum's bounced back with 28 points in Game 2 and 26 points to go along with 9 assists in Game 3. According to Synergy, Jason's been more efficient creating both points and assists during these finals than any other series of his career. The bona fide superstar Jason Tatum also has the most points as well as the most assists in these playoffs. Even more impressively, JT has now scored the third most playoff points of all time before turning the age of 25, only behind LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. Some decent company there. 14-1 after losing a game since January 23rd, the leadership and shot creation from not just mainly Tatum, but Jalen Brown, who can act as the number one guy, seamlessly gives this Ime Udoka coach ball club the ability to go back to the drawing board and bounce back. Having said that, Boston can't play with their food here, expect Draymond Green to play a lot better, and Wiggins and Poole to play more motivated in Game 4. But the fact of the matter is, Steph and Clay combined for a hefty 56 points in Game 3, and that still resulted in a near 20-point Warrior loss. This series could be over in 5, but I'm expecting Golden State to get one more. I have Boston closing this out in 6. What's your Game 4 prediction and why? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Thierry, who says, while he only got 8 points and 10 rebounds, Rob Williams III is definitely the unsung hero of the game. Time Lord had 3 steals and 4 blocks to show his elite defense. He had the highest plus minus and the best offensive and defensive rating for C's players that played more than 20 minutes tonight. He's one of the best traditional centers in the league right now, and I wish more people were noticing his contributions to the Celtics team trying to make a championship run. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.